The following has been approved for all audiences by the editor. Thank you for choosing Practical Distributism. The basic premise of distributism is that both economics and politics are subjects of ethics, because both exist to serve the common good. This is different than the usual conservative and liberal dichotomy. Distributism is economics as though families matter. This podcast is an audio version of the main site at practicaldistributism.blogspot.com. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, and share. Now, on to the article. Localism. My Thoughts on a New Name by David W. Cooney Published on the 11th of February, 2021 in December, the Society of Gilbert Keith Chesterton revealed what they proposed as the new name for distributism. Localism. This reveal was made simultaneously in the Society's magazine, Gilbert, and on its podcast, Uncommon Sense. Prior to its announcement, the Society did reach out to other distributists for reaction and input regarding the proposed name change. Thomas Stork and I wrote reactions that were included in the same issue of Gilbert. Adrian Alquist and I also discussed the topic on a later episode of their Uncommon Sense program, which can be found on YouTube. The problem with doing a live interview is that you can go into it with certain points and statements that you intend to make, and then find that the course of the conversation went in a direction where you didn't actually say something you intended. In listening to the interview, I found this was the case for me. I agree with everything I said, but there was one thing I intended to say, but didn't. The Society also issued a challenge to those who completely object to the change. Don't just reject their proposed name, suggest something better. Since this is an activity going on within the wider distributors community, I am presenting here my own thoughts on the idea not just on the proposed new name for distributism, but also on the idea that the name must be changed. To summarize my position at the beginning, when it comes to the idea of using the name localism in the context of distributism, I agree. However, I don't actually agree with the idea of completely replacing the name distributism with localism. This is what I intended to say during that interview and this article will explain my entire position. I am also very interested in your thoughts, so please comment on this topic. Does distributism need a new name? Even the founders thought it was not a good name. I don't know the history of the transition from the original distributivism to distributism, but it is basically true that throughout its entire history, the distributist movement has acknowledged that the name has issues. The primary issue being that the general population doesn't have any idea what it means. Even if they are not entirely correct about them, most people think they know what the terms capitalism and socialism mean. These are words they believe they can grasp. Distributism is not. Add to that the similarity in sound to redistribution, and the average person will assume that distributism is some form of socialist system to have government redistribute wealth. This puts us at a large disadvantage when trying to introduce the distributist idea to a large segment of the population. Tell them that you are a distributist, and then spend the next 60 minutes trying to explain how you are not a socialist rather than explaining what distributism actually is. Some may consider this sufficient reason to change the name. If you manage to get past that point, once you explain that we believe the best way to achieve distributive justice in society is to bring about greater economic and political independence by ensuring the structure of the law supports the widest practical distribution of private ownership of land and productive property, and you are basically back to square one. Remember that, for most of them, there are only two choices, capitalism and socialism. Is it possible that making this same argument associated with the name localism will alleviate that problem? I think it will, but only to a certain extent. 
This is because localism is a term already widely used in society, but those who use it don't mean quite the same thing as a distributist does. If you were to discuss localism with someone on the political left, they will likely be in favor of it. But for many of them, localism implies little more than supporting local small businesses rather than corporate outlets or franchises. However, they are generally more in favor of centralized government authority. The idea of decentralized government authority according to the principle of subsidiarity is not included in their understanding of localism. On the other hand, someone on the political right would certainly support the idea of locally owned business, but for them that idea includes franchises controlled by distant corporations and local locations of large businesses. Opening an Amazon warehouse, a Walmart supercenter, or a franchise restaurant in the community would be, for them, supporting the local economy. When it comes to government, many on the right think they are in favor of local government, but in reality, their idea of decentralized government authority truly stops at the state level. Even then, they are actually in favor of more centralized government power when they believe it will serve their economic goals. Even with those issues, the term localism is likely to be a more acceptable introduction to our ideas than distributism. But once we start to move past their own ideas of localism, we will be facing the same issue we currently face. Simply changing the term we use won't change the underlying philosophical differences between the various sides in this discussion, and these are the very heart of what we need to get to. It seems to me that the proposed name change will only overcome a minor hurdle along the path. Is that small hurdle enough to justify changing a name that has been in use for over a hundred years? In his book, Orthodoxy, Gilbert Chesterton wrote about how some words are a shock to the system, such that they make people take notice. I think distributism is such a word, even if it isn't a short one. Because of this, I think we should not consider abandoning the name of distributism. Instead, for me, localism is best looked at as an introduction, a more acceptable opening to a subject that will actually challenge many fundamental assumptions about society, government, and economics. When it comes to that reality of our views, distributism remains for me a much better word. I don't believe those who would ignore us, assuming we are just socialists, will suddenly be more open to our fundamental ideas based on a name change. They are unlikely to really examine our positions until they have to, hopefully because they are becoming more popular. I'm not convinced that distributism automatically turns away those who are open to at least learning about alternative ideas. Again, localism is a good opener for the former group, but it may be too comfortable a word to open them up to the challenge of ideas we are truly presenting. Another problem with changing the name is it looks like we are breaking from our own past. It will likely be portrayed by our adversaries as an attempt to deceive people into accepting our ideas. What, they will ask in an accusing tone, are the distributists trying to hide? If distributists were to completely rebrand ourselves as localists, people searching for localism might be led to our own writings, but they won't be led to the founders of the distributist movement, except maybe through our writings. Now, I may suffer from common human vainglory about my own writings, but I don't think I am in any way a replacement for those who founded distributism and presented its case for over 100 years before I joined the bandwagon. After all, those presentations worked for me using the name distributism, so they can work for others as well. If, on the other hand, we emphasize the idea of localism in our own writings on distributism, if we include localism in our tags and descriptions, then people searching for localism will be led to this idea called distributism and conclude these ideas are somehow linked. I believe they would be prompted to search for that unfamiliar term, 
distributism and discover the writings of both the founders and the current distributist movement. I do believe that we will never separate ourselves from the name distributism, and I don't think we should really try. It is not only a tie to the founders of the movement, but it is also a tribute to them. Do we honestly think that, when they were debating what name to give the movement, the original distributists never thought of localism? I don't really know, but these were truly brilliant people who emphasized local economics and government, so I doubt it. They struggled with the name for quite a long time, and eventually settled on distributism knowing it would be both clumsy and misunderstood. Yes, let's emphasize localism and do so by that name, especially in this time of increased centralization of economic and political power. Do not, however, completely abandon the name of distributism. In conclusion, I really do like the idea of using the term localism and trying to link that idea with distributism. I think it would be appropriate to use the term as an introduction for those new to the overall distributist idea that there actually is something other than the capitalist-socialist dichotomy, a door-opener, if you will. That is, after all, the greatest problem with the name distributism. I believe this term will help us forge ties with other localist groups like the Strong Towns Movement, local farmers groups and cooperatives, and other localist organizations who likely think of localism in a more limited way than we do. Maybe we can change that perspective and gain more allies. Some may think this is unlikely. To them, I answer with an article by Douglas R. Fox from the fall 2013 edition of Maine Organic Farmer and Gardener, where he proposed to that community that they seriously consider distributism. Thank you for listening. Practical Distributism can be found at practicaldistributism.blogspot.com. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, and share. If you are able, please consider becoming a supporter at subscribestar.com slash practical-distributism.